Hi folks, Metal Winnie. We are the Dome tonight for the Butcher Babies. Hey, I'm Carla. I'm Heidi. And we're the Butcher Babies. And you're watching Metal Wani. Your first European tour on support of your new album, Lily. So how has it been so far? It's been so much fun. You know, we started off in the UK on our on our UK Europe tour, and uh, we encountered a, a huge storm, Storm Emma. So um, it's a little rough traveling, but people are still coming out to all the shows, and so it's been a blast. It's been fun. We've been able to make snowballs, <laughs> lots of snow. Um, it's been fun. The reception has been great from the crowd. You know what's really incredible is when you write the music. You always think about what if, if the crowd is going to latch onto it. Will they sing along? Will they like it? Well, they're singing so loud I can hear them through my in-ear system. So it's a, an incredible feeling to look out in the crowd and see people singing the new material. I love it. Um, so London tonight, you are out through uh, the tour now, pretty much. Uh, so London always have a very strong crowd for you guys, so how excited are you to be uh, at the We're Dome We're so tonight? excited. We're ending the UK portion of our UK Europe tour with a bang. We did Manchester last night, which is always incredible, and London um, is always incredible for us as well. So we're really excited. We walked into the room that they have us in. We're like, wait, are you sure that we're in this big room? Because yeah, London does come out in full force, and they always have been like that with us. It's, we're super grateful for our fan base here, and they treat us so well. Mm -hmm. I remember in 2016 was uh, the underworld, so um, yeah, I remember the, the madness really on, a, yeah. on the stage and on the crowd as well. So uh, can we expect any surprises tonight? Mm, well, we're playing a song that we haven't played since 2013. Um, so yeah, it was 2013 the last time we played that song. So we're playing it on this tour. Um, uh, we're playing some from the very first EP to the new album. So just different picks throughout our catalog and also some really cool special moments on stage that you'll see. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you just had an acoustic set for the VIPs. So is that something you do in every show or? Yep. Yeah? Yeah, every day. Uh, and I, maybe that's why we, <laughs> I can't talk right now. <laughs> no, but every day it's so fun to be able to uh, experience that with our, our you know, party animals. Um, you know, they come early, we call it a pre-party, and we all get to hang out, shake hands, chit-chat a little, they get to hear the stories behind the songs, and um, it's fun. It's really fun for us to do. Um, you know, it is like a little taxing on our voices, but it's fine because it's worth it. Mm -hmm. How did um, this idea came up? to do some live um, acoustic sets. You know, we always want to do something different with our meet and greets, whether it's uh, playing games or we had a VIP pizza bus party right. in the US. And, and so for this tour, you know, all of us were really inspired by VH1 storytellers and old school, you know, MTV Unplugged. And so we thought it'd be a really cool experience for our fans if we took our own songs and deconstructed them, made them acoustic songs and, and did um, something in that same vein. And it has been a blast, and people, you, you can see it in their faces, they're so surprised at what we've done, you know, with, with the songs and making them acoustic. Um, it's really neat for us to do it as well, you know, we play metal all the time, so it's, it's really fun to do something that's a little bit different. Um, as she said, it's a, we didn't realize how taxing it would be to basically do two sets a day for our voices, but mm -hmm. we, we're having so much fun, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I stumbled across a lot of uh, Butcher Babies pictures online and I've been seeing you multiple times now as well. Um, I feel like you guys have changed a lot uh, on the last few years. Uh, maybe due to the fact that you guys are happier now and uh, doing what you love, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've been a band for nine years. Yeah. So, you know, things change over the years and, um, you know, I, it's fun to play with our looks. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, we like to try different things with makeup different wardrobes, uh, Carla got dreads. <laughs> I had red hair for a while, um, half blue, half blonde. I have black and stuff in it now. It's just it's fun to change it. Our personal styles are, are always changing and evolving. We like to have fun. Both of us were formerly in careers where we really couldn't you know, um, change our look all the time or have fun with it. And now that we're full-time musicians, why not do all the things you've ever wanted to do to yourself, you know? Um, 
So I see you guys respond a lot uh, of messages and comments on Facebook and Instagram to the fan, and as well the keyboard warrior who, um, <laughs> how can I say, who writes a lot of negative shit about you basically. So I think it takes courage to fight against those negative vibes and on social media really. So what are your takes on that? I think it takes more courage just to ignore it. Um, it it's, you know, We've always gotten that our whole lives, not just from internet keyboard warriors, but you know, back in school, uh, in high school, middle school, college, whatever, we're used to being criticized or, or negative energy or, or whatever. And sometimes I think we'll sometimes we'll call out you know, people here and there. I mean, it's it's relentless. I can several times a day, like someone will just tweet me and say "fuck you." Okay, <laughs> you know, it's it, like what's the point? But you know, sometimes every once in a while, I'll respond to it because if the same person continues and continues and continues, I'll just put them on blast. Cause it's like, you making yourself look dumb by the things that you're saying. You're not making me look dumb because like I can do that myself. <laughs> but no, they, you know, it's like, the, to us, it's an everyday, it's an everyday thing. And so we don't really let it bother us. It's if, not if something you to be bothered let by. Some people, what people say online, bother you every day of your life. You'll lead a miserable existence. I, you know, my personal life is clear of all of the, the internet drama. Who cares? And obviously, it's been nine years, like since we started the band. Mm -hmm. We're a lot different now than we were nine years ago. But we've had to just let it go and not care. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I coming to Lilith. So the new album sounds great. I like the, the, genre, the mix of jaws on the album. Uh, you go from extra metal to punk rock. Uh, there is some very groovy part as well. Uh, you got some parts, um, you got that Meshuga feeling, uh, Ben the Strowman, yeah. quite like. And you got that kind of, I'd say, even pop rock kind of even in a uh, head spin. Mm -hmm. um, so do you, feel, do you feel more confident this time around and uh, in how you guys uh, have progressed? Uh, as a band and been able to channel so many different emotions through uh, your creativity? Well, I think for us, we've always been very diverse in our music um, on, on all of our albums. But with this one, it's definitely more mature. Um, as I stated before, we've been a band for nine years and you know, when we were writing our last album, we wrote it on the road. And um, so, you know, different times where we could actually just sit aside uh, during a tour, after sound check, and you know, write a little bit, or sit down as a band in the bus and write. But for Lilith, it was very different. We decided to take a year off writing, or sorry, a year off of touring to write and record this album. And I think that that was a huge, a huge benefit for us to be able to sit with all the material. We went into the recording process with 24 songs. And we whittled them down into 12. But um, it was really cool for us to be able to sit in a studio together and write and write and write the songs and then tear them apart and then put them back together and rewrite. And I think that's when you get your best material. But, um, you know, we're not afraid to be ourselves and do different stuff in our music. And luckily, we have a great fan, fan base that allows us to do that. They like us, you know, being ourselves and being dynamic. I think if we were just, you know, put out the same song and the same album over and over again, it'd get really boring. It'd be boring for me, and I wouldn't, I'd be bored doing it. So, um, yeah, we're, we're confident with putting in, you know, a pop element in one song. Whatever, we're inspired by so many different types of music. You know, metal's obviously our main steez, but we're inspired by everything. Um, from pop to country to classical to jazz, uh, all sorts of different stuff. So um, you'll hear it all in our music. Yeah, I think it worked really well. It's a very good surprise to me anyway. Thank you. Um, what was the biggest challenge writing this album? Hmm. Gosh, I don't even, I don't consider any of the writing process a challenge. I feel like it's, it's um, the best part of the whole experience for me. And we all work really well together and um, uh, just we're, we're very we respect each other's talents and um, the whole band is like that and so it's very easy to work with each other and and pick really, things apart and I really can't think that, any, that there's anything that there's really challenging with it besides like obviously like oh I thought this part was great 
and it ended up not being that great, you know, or these songs that we thought were like going to be bangers. Mm -hmm. And it just turned out not that good and didn't make the album. Like those, that happens. And I think maybe that's a challenge, but more so like Carla said, we work well together and we're not afraid to be like, we can do better. Or, yeah. Or, you know, if I write something dumb and she has no problem calling me out and vice versa. But that's what, you know, it's a common respect mm -hmm. in that sense. So it's cool. So how does uh, Lilith weight against Take It Like a Man? Gosh, it's really hard to say how they weight against each other. They're different albums completely. The sound is different mm -hmm. on, on the two albums. There's different producers. I love both the albums. There's moments in both that I will say that that's my favorite. Um, it's, it's very difficult to say. I think that Lilith um, is, is just a more, more mature. Um, it's, the songwriting is better. And I think it's because we had more time to sit with the material. We also had a new drummer that was very instrumental in, in helping us write Lilith and he brought a new direction to the band. It was a little bit of a rebirth uh, with our first new member. So all of those things, you know, kind of made it more mature, but they're both beautiful albums. I can't choose between my children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, what's uh, the plan for the rest of the year for the Bachelor Babies? Tour, 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 tour. We get back to the States, we jump back out on tour, and then we'll be on tour for the rest of the year. Hopefully forever. <laughs> got a bunch of festivals already planned. And, uh... Yeah, in the States, in the we're States, hitting we're almost every major rock festival, so we're really excited about that. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, we love touring and we love touring over here. We love touring there. We just want to bring Lilith worldwide. Mm -hmm. so. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.